I had tried fluoxetine, metazapine, propranolol, the benzodiazepams, you know, and zopiclone and melatonin and a whole range of different talking therapies. Um, and it gets to the stage where you sort of don't feel like anything is going to work. The chemistry therapy turns your way of thinking from one that is so complicated that it becomes stuck um, to one that is so straightforward that it becomes free. So the first time that I was, I was sort of diagnosed with depression and anxiety was in 2014. My next sort of big decline was in, in 2020. I was extremely low, I was very suicidal, I was self-harming, um, I was, like I said, I'd cut myself off from absolutely everyone. Um, I couldn't bring myself to talk to any friends at all. Um, I became, or I'd started to become very affected by things that had been happening during those months. Sort of everything that was associated with that time somehow became very tarnished. Like you'd lost all sort of, all love of anything that you previously enjoyed and all love of life. Or at the end of 2022, I went to my local GP and sort of just as an, an off cuff remark, he turns to me and says, oh, well, you know, you don't have to worry all that much because we've had really exciting developments in psychedelic medicine recently and they're showing great results. So if it comes to it, you can try that. Um, at which point I sort of say, really? <laughs> I, I'd never heard of it. I had no idea what he was talking about. So I sort of said, what, what's this? Um, and it just so happened that one of, at that stage, I believe two psychedelic clinics was 10 minutes from my front door. How does ketamine affect the workings of the brain? Ketamine works on the glutamate receptors in the brain, and that's different to uh, common uh, antidepressant medications, for example, like SSRIs, which work on serotonin receptors in the brain. So we understand that ketamine can offer an antidepressant effect via a different uh, pathway. We really pay attention to our client's mindset going into a ketamine assisted session um, and we do that via careful preparation. They do a, a sort of a questionnaire which is scored out of 27. 27 being the most depressed you can possibly be, 0 to 5 being you know normal population, Wh whatever normal means that's the normal population mark. Um, but at, at that stage when I sat the test um, I was 25 out of 27, so you know, bordering on on the the most extreme it could be. I failed on getting in for exactly that reason that I was not stable enough to start the treatment. But what the clinic did, they didn't just say, "Oh, tough luck, close the door on the way out. We'll you know never see you again." And he said, "Look, give me a month's stability. Come back in the new year. We'll reassess you then. We'll see what we can do then." So. That, if nothing else, that gave me a goal, if you like, to, to just push on a little bit further. Um, and looking back on it now, that was extremely clever of him to do that. Ketamine is not a classic psychedelic. Uh, ketamine is in the category of a dissociative anaesthetic. We administer ketamine via an IM injection. So it goes intramuscularly in, into, the, into the arm here. Uh, we don't deliver ketamine in anaesthetic doses. Um, we dose far below that threshold. But certainly our clients will experience some dissociative effects and what I mean by that is perhaps a kind of out of body experience. Some of the memories you had when you were undergoing this treatment weren't forgettable. Uh, would yeah. you mind sharing some of the stuff that the psychedelic trip helped you um, to see or realise or understand? The creativity that you get out of a psychedelic experience is, is really, really um, something that, that stuck with me. And that's where I got those, that real sense of awe. Um, it's this sort of kaleidoscope of colour. It's this sort of best Baz Luhrmann film you can possibly imagine, if you like, when you have those moments. And one that I, I really experienced was, was a real love of my own mind, a real love of my own creativity, which I had not had before. Um, you know, I had, at that stage, mental health issues for nine years, you know. So 
I was fairly out of love with my own mind after all of that. But once you get to, into the psychedelic experience, you think, okay, my mind is creating these things and it's creating music and, and imagery and it's able to do all of these things. And you think, that's, that's really cool. That's really amazing that it can do that. During the ketamine experience, um, the therapist is mainly there as a, as a caretaker, as that containing supportive um, presence and witnessing the experience whilst the client is having quite an internal um, experience. So we encourage that through giving our clients uh, eye shades and headphones um, through which we play music that is designed to um, represent kind of the arc of the drug experience so it has kind of a peak and a plateau um, and then also kind of helping to bring people back uh, to the room afterwards so we're kind of following that arc with the music. When you're um, having your psychedelic trip you have a pair of noise cancelling headphones on and it's playing some sort of light background music. Um, at the end of it um, I asked for the, the, the tracks, if you like. So I just want them because I felt like actually they were really soothing, they were really interesting, and really, you know, if, if in the future I just want something literally just to sit in my room and calm myself down, perfect. Um, then you listen to them back and you think, this is not what I heard. And you think, actually, my brain is, is improvising new music in this. It's, it's composing its whole new sort of score, working with this at the same time. So that's, that for me was, was incredible. Then the other example, again, it's not very interesting, it's not very cool, but I would sit in the, sit in the waiting room um, playing chess on my phone. I'm not a good chess player at all, but sort of in the end of a psychedelic experience for me, you could see the board and you could figure out, okay, right, this is where the game was at. And all of a sudden you could see a lot more moves and a lot more things that you could do. I think that is what it does. It opens up your mind to a lot more possibilities rather than thinking, this is the move, this is all I can do, this is the shot, this is all I can do, this is the music I'm listening to, I'm just going to hear those notes. All of a sudden you can see a lot more different things. Importantly, we also understand that ketamine can help with neuroplasticity. So that is uh, increasing connectivity in the brain, so within and between brain regions, and also synaptic growth. And so again, that's really useful for psychotherapy. It really augments the therapy process. People can take new perspectives on familiar problems and behave in more adaptive ways uh, that make them perhaps move forward in their life in ways that they've really struggled to previously. When they've previously felt really stuck, um, they managed to take that kind of springboard towards the life that they want to live. There are some really dark moments during, during these trips as well and, and dark emotions that, that you have to deal with. Um, some of them are, are, are really quite, quite scary. Some of them you get senses of being, I mean for me, you know, the senses of even sort of being buried alive, being sort of, you know, elements of sort of real struggle, mental and physically, um, real sense of seeing a lot of death. But there was a real sort of shift where suddenly you'd be taken underground and stuff and, and the music would, would very, very much change. And, you know, I would chat to my psychotherapist afterwards and she said, yeah, your heart rate went up massively in some stages because it's being monitored throughout. You can go to some some difficult and, and dark places um, and there is that sense that it can be really helpful to allow yourself to, to go there um, and that's because perhaps uh, the dif your difficulties are maintained because of your avoidance um, and all your attempts to avoid going to dark places, which of course is really understandable <laughs> why, why you would try not to do that. So um, with the ketamine experience and those dissociative effects, you're allowing yourself to be there. But what we think might be really useful and protective about that separation that dissociation gives, that kind of not quite being in your body, um, is that you're not um, fully experiencing it in a way that feels so overwhelming. So that you can experience pain and difficulty, but you stay inside your kind of window of psychological tolerance, so you don't feel overwhelmed.
but you're also ideally not so cut off that you don't feel anything at all. You're just in this useful window of tolerance, which what we understand psychologically and therapeutically can really help with processing uh, trauma, for example, or just psychological difficulty. I remember saying out loud, and was one of the only few audible things that I did say, was you can't break me. Um, and I think that was something that really stuck with me during those dark moments, was, was not just the fact that I was having to process them, but was the fact that actually my response in that moment was to fight. This is bringing back memories of real mental pain. This is bringing back memories of feeling like I don't belong anywhere, that I should be dead. It's bringing back memories of, you know, if you like, suicide plans that I'd made in the past. It's about working through them afterwards and thinking, okay, that's bringing back those memories because what I've done to those is just suppress them and push them all away and thought, I don't want to deal with that ever again. You do have to deal with it. I can't just keep pushing it away and away and away. What the psychedelic experience is, it brings back those emotions that you really never want to have and it lets you process them in a much more constructive way. And how does it feel to know that your work has such a great impact on people such as Tristan? That gives me goosebumps when you when you talk about that actually to think about that I had the privilege to work with Tristan and support him through his ketamine assisted therapy journey. When we first met I recall that Tristan was in a very kind of low dark place mentally um, and certainly struggling with motivation and energy levels. Um, and he did a lot of work uh, himself to prepare for his ketamine sessions um, and to ensure he was as supported and as stable as he could be um, going into the, the therapy. And then Tristan just worked completely collaboratively and openly uh, with myself uh, and was able with that therapeutic support to use, to, to really harness the ketamine experiences um, to help him to kind of dig deeper into um, what might be at the root of some of those um, low moods that he'd been struggling with. At the beginning, I scored 25 out of 27 on the, on the depression test. So almost, almost as high as you can get on it. Um, at the end of it, we re-ran the test. I was down to two out of 27. That is a huge, huge shift in such a short period of time. Even if it would have halved it for me, even if it, if it would just taken it out of the 20s for me, that would have been a huge improvement anyway. I'm not here to say that that will happen for absolutely everyone. Mine is a real big success story and a success story that I think, you know, psychedelic drugs do have the ability to do and will do for a lot of people. We are now experiencing what has become known as the psychedelic renaissance. So we are thankfully now able to conduct good quality research with these compounds uh, to demonstrate their potential benefits. There probably is some stigma attached potentially uh, to using uh, something like ketamine, um, which can be used in recreational contexts to treat mental health problems. But I think awareness and understanding is growing um, as research develops and as we start to use these compounds in clinical settings or as we start to use ketamine specifically in clinical settings, um, that recreational use and clinical use are very different uh, sides of the coin. So we're using it in a highly regulated um, fashion. It's extremely safe um, and it's, I would say, not comparable. Um, how do you see the future of treating mental health uh, disorders with this newfound uh, treatment? The future of, of psychedelic therapy, I hope is bright. I really, really do hope it's bright. I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of, I think, two things. Firstly, breaking down the stigma um, and making sure that people know that it's there. And secondly, obviously, making it available to, to people um, 
you know, through the NHS, making it available to as many people as possible who, who need it. You look at the amount of people, you know, whether they be war vets, whether they be asylum seekers, whether they be, you know, people who have served alongside our armed forces, interpreters, security forces, whatever it is, you look at all those people suffering with PTSD, um, chronically suffering with it, you could treat those people and you could significantly change a lot of people's lives through psychedelic treatment.